temperature, pressure and your height fairly accurately measured, all for about the price of a can of coke. Is that it? Hi and welcome to Extronico. Today we're going to look at um, a temperature and pressure sensor. This is a particular type of sensor that actually measures both temperature and pressure. It's their BMP280. You can find them all over eBay, AliExpress, Banggood, etc. So we'll move on. We'll get the wiring done first and then we'll move on to the software. Okay, we're going to work with a uh, temperature and pressure sensor. Uh, these are them. So they're very, very simple devices. There's just six connections. You can see that on, on the back. Um, very little circuitry on the other side as well. Uh, the actual small uh, sensor unit you can see more or less in the middle there. Um, yeah, and it measures temperature and pressure. Um, if you turn it over, you can see the six connections it's got, which um, means it can connect, connect either with I squared C or SPI. Uh, I'm going to use it with I squared C. Either interface is fine. Uh, so I've connected up the wires. Uh, on quite a, a long, um, I've actually extended the wires, quite a, a long set of wires, uh, just so I can uh, move it about later a bit more easier. Uh, so let's connect it up. Uh, you'll notice I've got a screen in here as well. That's just so that later on um, we'll actually connect up the screen, which uh, there is a previous video on how to connect up these simple OLED screens. Uh, there's a link coming up now. Um, so we can get a nice easy display rather than using a serial monitor all the time, because you're not going to write any sort of real application. It's, going to just uh, use a serial monitor for your display it's not going to happen you're going to have some sort of other type of display in there as well so let's quickly wire it up so we've got um, positive which is my red where it's positive very challenging on your eyes so positive is there and let's get the black And black goes to ground. It's very hard to do when I mean, you've not stuck your board down, which I need to start doing, I think, when I'm doing these uh, uh, videos of connecting up. So the board slides about on this surface quite easily. And then we need SCL, which for me is the orange wire. And that connects to A5 on the Arduino Nano. There is a connection table which will on the Extronica website showing you where others will, other types of Arduino will be connected. And the SDA connects to A4 which is just next door. And that's it. Um, next time we'll probably bring this board up on the screen and I'll have connected up the screen. I'm not going to do that again in camera. So as I said, it's been done before. The link's already been up. Uh, also, there are links below to the Extronica website and to actually this particular build as well. Let's move on to the actual uh, coding and testing. Okay, so let's have a look at the software to uh, drive this. Um, we have some software on extronica.com and we'll just bring that up now. So if you go in here into basics and down here it says using BMP to A to base pressure and temperature sensors. Click on that and it will bring to this uh, post, uh, blog post web page uh, that I've written for this sensor. Um, showing the connection diagrams, <clears throat> excuse me, etc. So if we scroll down, we'll find there's a little bit of testing code we need to do here. We'll just copy it all. We'll just need to, before you can actually copy from this, you need to click copy there, then allow you to copy it, control C, and we can paste that into the Arduino. And it is going to error because we've got two includes here at the top that I know for a fact we haven't got um, so we'll just quickly compile that and you'll see the error come up and then we'll go and get there we go right away so yeah doesn't know what, what sense.h is because we've not got in our library we haven't got the BM280 library either so if we quickly uh, just if I just copy that bring up web page new web page and type that in with just a good measure GitHub. And 
this little bit here where I can see I've already clipped. Yep, and then clone or download. So it downloads it. And that's done. We'll also get the other one while we're at it. So we need sensor from Adafruit. And we'll type that in. It's there as well, along with just with major GitHub. Um, I think it'll be that. I thought it was called Common Sensor. I'm just hoping this is the one I've used before. I'm just looking through. I'll just go back one. There, it's this one. It's not that top one. I do remember when I was using it before, it was called the Common Sensor Library. So we'll go into that one. Okay, so the Common Sensor Library is what we need. So clone or download. Download a zip. And that's done. So I'll bring back up the Arduino software. That should compile. So I'll just do a test compile. Not uploading at the moment. And what's it aired on this time? Fatal error in all such file directory aid through sensor.h. Let me just check. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, um, right, so we have to add them to the library. So sketch, include library, um, add a zip library. And downloads we need to go to. Um, the sensor library. Okay, and then we'll have to add in the BM280 library. Now I know for a fact there will be another error uh, that comes up in a second, but We'll add it anyway and we'll show you the error that you get. So now we'll add the BMP280 library. And then we'll do a, a, a compile. And you'll see the error that comes up, which we've had before when working with the OLED screen. If you've watched that episode. Some of the... Um, oh, that's unexpected because we haven't got an error. I'll show I was expecting. I was expected to say in here, spurious folder in um, one of these files that we've just downloaded. Because if we look in downloads and we look in, I think it's the BM280. I'll just check. Um, have a look what's in there. There's a GitHub folder which usually the IDE does not like and mourns about, and you have to just delete it. It's of, it doesn't mean it's of no um, use to your project. So usually you've got to delete the GitHub folder. We haven't had to for some reason on this. Maybe I've got a slightly different version of the IDE. I'm not sure. Um, I thought it was identical, and it certainly when I was uh, uh, working on this uh, this week for the web page, it did come up with um, there's a spurious folder in in your uh, BMP280 um, library, uh, but it hasn't. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to um, run this, and it needs the serial monitor to be open, but we'll upload it first. So control U to upload. Let's do that. I'll just have a quick drink of my um, brew. It's done uploading. Okay, so now we just open up the serial monitor. and could not find a valid BMP280 sensor check wiring. So I was expecting this. Uh, in the Adafruit library, they have hardwired the address, the R squared C address for their sensor, their cell, which is fair enough. Um, but the ones you get off um, eBay or AliExpress or Banggood or whatever, um, can be the same as the Adafruit library, and sometimes not. So what it is, it basically, as long as the wiring's correct, which I'm pretty sure I've done that right, um, it's just a matter of actually working out what the R squared C address is for uh, the device you've bought and then um, putting it into the Adafruit library, changing where they've written their address. And to do this, we use an R squared C bus scanner, um, which if we bring back up my web page, I talk about this in there as well. So we'll go down here and I've copied this off, I think, one of the Adafruit uh, websites. So it's just a basic R squared C scanner, so we'll copy that code. 
and we'll just pop it straight into there where we we're working and we'll upload that and it'll tell us it just basically scans every address that's possible on the R2C -C bus and if it gets a response it says yes I've found something and tells you the address where it's found something at okay so it's done uploading so it's running so let's go to serial monitor and okay so it's found an address at uh, hex 3C and hex 76 I know that 3C is my OLED screen that I got hooked up which means that the R2C address for um, my pressure and temperature sensor sensor is 76 so using your um, text editor of choice uh, you could just use normal notepad I prefer notepad plus plus which I'm just launching you need to edit the Adafruit um, library so okay I'll just shrink that down into a better size screen so it opens up whatever it has last which is uh, some graphics routines for the OLED screen when we were working on that some time ago so we want to open the BMP280 sensor library we want the header file which is the .h where it will be defined for the actual address you scroll down and here we go RC squared address bits and settings the address they've got a 77 and ours is 76 so change that to 76 close that down should ask us if we want to save it it didn't let me just check that save that it's probably automatically saved maybe no it hasn't saved it but it hasn't forgotten it either you can see there's a little asterisk still in the top corner here saying hasn't saved so let's just save that I think it keeps a temporary um, saved copy but it's not saves over it doesn't save over the original so it's saved now okay so now we want to go back to our previous course I'm just going to go control Z to get back to our initial code and control U to upload to the device and now barring anything I'm not expecting it should work so uploading <coughs> take the last bit of my um, brew okay so now we have a look at um, serial monitor and yeah it's working um, it's hard to do, if you look at this, it's a star C for degrees C, it's hard to do a little all there in uh, ASCII. Um, not saying it's not possible in some way with this, uh, let's stop the scroll. Not saying it's not possible, but it's easier to put uh, an asterisk in the C. So, temperature is 32.68 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is incredibly hot, and I've just realised why it's so hot. Because it's certainly not that hot where I'm living today. Um, it's around about 25, 26. I've just realized the sensor is actually under my right wrist as I'm typing. It's actually just, I've been led on it, I haven't realized my arm. So it's my roughly external skin temperature. So if we move that out, we'll have a look in a second. I've moved it out of the way. You can see now, if we bring up the screen, I've moved it next to the um, thing. So we'll just sort of like wedge it in there a little bit. Right, and go back. So yeah, 32 degrees, 6, 8 Celsius, which is not going to be right. We'll just put it on auto scroll again and see if we can see the temperature dropping down. In fact, if we close the serial monitor, reopen it, we're going to start at the top again. So serial monitor, and then take it off auto scroll. Yeah, it's slowly uh, dropping down. So we're at about uh, 100,000 pascals, which is uh, very close to what they call standard pressure. Standard pressure is 100,000 pascals. Um, and it gives you an approximate altitude above sea level of 104.12 metres. Um, we'll talk about the accuracy of that later on. But for now, we want to get to work with the OLED screen as well. So let's stop that there. And we'll go back to... Um, just take that off copying. Don't want that. And we'll go down on the web page. So I'll talk about whatever problems you might have, what I could just done. And then we come to the web, uh, the piece of code that works with the OLED screen. Again, I've put a link to this. I'm not going to go through any sort of details of how you uh, work with an OLED screen. It's been covered before in the previous article. So I've copied that. I'm going to paste it into there. And we're going to upload it. And we should see the screen come to life now. Compiling. Loading. Screen should come to life. nearly there yeah okay yeah brilliant so we've got three lines on the screen we've got uh, temperature 
which is now dropped to a more sensible 26 degrees. Uh, pressure is, like I said, around about 100,000 pascals, and then an estimated height above sea level. Now, coming back to the cord here as well, the way you can work out what your height is, is basically we live in a sea of fluid called air. Just like if you go into the sea and you're in then the fluid called water, uh, the further down you go, the higher the pressure. So if you go deep, like submarines, they have a limit to how deep they can go before the pressure is too much and it would crush them. And that's just because of the sheer weight of water above. So the deeper you go, the more water above you've got. And so that all presses down on you and that increases the pressure. It's no different with the air that we, we live in every day. This is a fluid, just like the sea is a fluid. So the higher you go in the air, the less the pressure. So if you think about it, we're at the bottom, basically, of a big swimming pool of air. So we're at the highest pressure down here. So as it goes up, the pressure sensor, the air pressure gets a little bit less as you get near to the surface of the air, to the edge of space it will be for us, where the pressure is very, very low. So by using that, by knowing that air pressure, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> knowing that air pressure gets less as you go up, you can do a, a roughish calculation as to how um, your height is. So use its uh, height above sea level, um, but if you look at back at the code here where it says read altitude, it passes in a number, a barometric pressure number, um, for your local area. Because around the world, in fact, between towns, it can be a little bit different. The air pressure fluctuates. We're in a big sea of swirling air going up and down, higher in some parts of the globe and lower in other parts of the globe, just like a choppy sea, being slightly higher in some places, slightly lower in the other. So... Um, you need to go onto Google, look up, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to put my local sort of address in Google on, on uh, YouTube for you. Um, you need to go into Google, type in your local area, put in perhaps um, um, pressure for wherever you live, air pressure for where you live. You'll get a value back, or you'll be able to find a value that you can then put into there, and that will give you more of an accurate height reading there. But what we'll do just now, just for a bit of fun, you can see it's fluctuating around uh, 102 ish uh, height of 102 meters or thereabouts so 101 point something late and 102 uh, ish it's almost 102 now I'm just gonna I put some long wires on this which I did before um, so I can move it about 50 centimeters up it's got an accuracy I think about one to two meters but we should even then looking at the averages of what we're getting we're getting 101 point it's basically 102 I'm gonna move it as high as uh, low as I can get sorry so I'm gonna move it down below and this is just about, that's about 25 centimetres lower than what it was. It's now 101.7995. Still very close to the 102, but never quite getting to the 102 compared to when it was 25 centimetres higher than it was. So now I'm going to move it about 40 centimetres um, higher than it was originally and about 70 centimetres higher than what it was just a few seconds ago. And now you can see it's actually 102 and it's almost 103 at times. So we get 102.68 there, 102.90. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is really struggling today. Um, and you can see there's a definite difference in just these few centimetres high. The length of wire I've got is around about 40 centimetres. So I'm going from a high of 40 centimetres now and then I'm going to bring it down again to as low I can get it, which is only about an extra 30 centimetres low from where it was. So it's about a 70 centimetre height difference there from where I just had it at its highest to its lowest. And you can see there's a definite difference. So the accuracy of these um, devices is incredible, the price you get. So you've got temperature, pressure and your height fairly accurately measured, all for about the price of a can of Coke. Amazing. Okay, so that wraps it up for this. As um, an extension, if you want to try and um, do a bit of alteration to the code, um, you could, when you first start up your device, get it to read the current pressure of wherever it is. So, okay, just sat on this, this table like this. You get it to read the pressure and pass it into the height routine so it comes up with basically zero then, and then see how that affects. So you can then have something that knows its relative height for wherever it started from. So get it to measure its height, it can measure its relative height as it goes up and down like that. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.